When you think of a math class, you probably think of plugging a bunch of numbers into formulas, doing a bunch of calculations, and trying to work out to get the right solution. Statistics is a little bit different though. You'll be expected to do a lot less computation and virtually no work by hand. We're much more concerned with analyzing results, crunching numbers, and learning how to interpret what they mean. And we let the heavy lifting get taken care of by programs like Excel or StatCrunch. You need to have a basic understanding of how to use Excel and StatCrunch. And then you need to understand what numbers to plug in. But then the programs will do the heavy computation. And your job is really to interpret the result and apply it in a statistical setting. In the remainder of this video, I'm going to highlight some important math lab resources and then walk through an introduction to Excel and StatCrunch. In math lab, anytime you get stuck, take advantage of the question help. The help me solve this and view an example do a great job of breaking down the problem step by step and show you how to reach the solution. You can also watch videos, jump to the textbook, or send me a copy of the question so I can help assist. You'll get a few attempts at each answer, and after you've missed it a few times, you'll see it says final check. If you miss it still on your final check, don't give up. It is marked wrong currently, but if you click on similar, similar question, you'll have another chance at a very similar problem with the number slightly different, and you can still earn full credit for that problem. When you reach some problems, a little pop-up box will appear with helpful resources or videos that give you a little extra support for that problem. I highly encourage that you take advantage of any instructor tips that pop up as you go through the homework. And now I want to begin talking about Excel and StatCrunch. And I want to make you aware of this little box that shows up often when you have a table of numbers. And it allows you to click quickly open that table in StatCrunch or in Excel. So I'll open it in StatCrunch first and you may need to allow pop-ups. But when you click on that button, as you can see, it just copies the data from the problem directly into StatCrunch so you can use it. Another option you have is to open the table in Excel. What I prefer to do is to copy it and then just paste it in Excel. So you can click copy. Down here I'm hitting control C or you can right click and hit copy and then just go into Excel and paste. But either way you can also get the data opened in Excel. Now I'm going to introduce some basic features in Excel and then I'll talk about some of the basic features of StatCrunch. So Excel has all the power of a basic calculator. Uh, you can just do if you start with an equal sign, you can do any uh, thing you would do in your calculator, like 7 plus 8, and it will calculate it for you. And you can do much more complicated things, but always starting with an equal sign, and then you can type in the formula you want to compute. A really great feature is all the formulas already built into Excel. So, for example, if you want to find the sum of this entire column of data, you use the, the formula sum. If I want to find the average, I can use the formula average. And there's a lot of great formulas already built into Excel, and I'll share more of them as we go through the course. Uh, but some of the ones you may need in week one, there's standard deviation formula, for you want dot s if it's a sample you would use dot p if it's the whole population but here's the standard deviation of those numbers um, there's formulas for the median you find the median of a group of numbers and there's many more so play around with the formulas you can ask me about formulas google formulas look on youtube excel can pretty much handle anything you'll need in this course and one really nice thing about Excel is cell reference. So if you get a solution to uh, some calculation, you can just 
see it right there, and it's at cell D6. So if later on I needed to multiply that, that answer by, by 15, let's say, I could just do 15 times, and then I can reference that answer. So I don't have to type it in again or worry about rounding or anything like that. Just reference the cell. You'll see it gets highlighted, and then when I hit Enter, it does that computation for me. In Excel, under the Insert tab, you can also draw bar graphs or scatter diagrams. And there's a lot of great features in Excel. And as I said, play around with it, get used to it, and I'll introduce more features as the term goes on. So now in StatCrunch, this program is really, really designed for statistics. And it will be a huge advantage to you to understand how to use it in this term. And for some of their later weeks, Coming into StatCrunch, it'll just be a few clicks and the program will be able to produce the result and crunch all the numbers and give you the answer in a matter of seconds. And sometimes it's a lot easier in StatCrunch than it is in Excel just because StatCrunch is really designed for uh, statistical computations like that. Some stuff is not as nice in StatCrunch. You can't really use cell reference uh, like I just showed in Excel quite as easy. Uh, there is a way you have to go to data, compute, and then expression, and you'd have to build your expression. And so you could do like the sum of the city A. You have to find sum and then click the column you want to sum. And if you're okay with that, hit compute. And there it found the sum of the city A category. So StatCrunch isn't quite as nice if you're trying to enter basic formulas or if you're trying to use it as a calculator and just multiply numbers. Excel's better for that. But StatCrunch is great when it comes to complex computations uh, for statistics and you'll really want to use it in the later weeks. I'll show one thing here in StatCrunch that could be useful in week one. Um, so we're going to go to our stats and we're just going to do some summary stats here. And we're going to do it over our columns because our data is lined up in columns. And I'll just do it for City A. So you, if you wanted to do it for City B, you just click what column you want and you see it shows up here the one you're selected. So City A. And then down here are all the statistics I can, I can compute. And here are all the ones, again, if they're over in this box on the right, that means they're selected. If you just wanted to find just the mean, you could click on mean, and that's the only thing that'll show up when you click compute. If you want everything, or if you want multiple things, you know, click what you want and hit control. Hold control down as you click. So I'm holding control, and so more things show up. If I hold shift down, it'll get everything in between the two places I click. So I got, have everything now because I held shift and clicked on the first and the last thing. So now when I click compute, it's going to pop up a little box with everything computed for column A here. So I can quickly see the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, the median, the range, all of that shows up instantly with a click of a button. So here you can see a, an advantage of StatCrunch. That would take a lot more typing in in Excel. You'd have to type in a formula for mean, a formula for variance, a formula for standard deviation. Here, StatCrunch did all of those at once for, for the column A and gave me all the results pretty much instantaneously. So again, that was stat, summary stats, of the column. And that's all I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any questions about MathLab, StatCrunch, Excel, I really encourage you to utilize YouTube or Google. A lot of times you can get an immediate answer to the question you have by using those resources. I'm also always here to help and happy to do so. Send me an email, send me a text, give me a call. Let me know what your question is and I'll get back to you and uh, help you work it out.